the uh, statutes that okay. have existed for hundreds of years. The same thing is true with Israel. They have what are called basic laws, which are a substitute. It would be better to have a constitution. I've been working and trying to get a written constitution for Israel literally right. since 1970, but it hasn't happened yet. I can't even... I can't even imagine not having a written constitution. We have one, and it's still uh, bloody. Okay, so um, he is saying that, as far as I understand, that they have the the judges can't just rule arbitrarily. They have to pin it to some sort of constitutional law. Otherwise, it's just a political body. Is that true? That's true. That's absolutely true. And what happened is the Supreme Court, under my other very close friend, who I've known since 1966, uh, Aaron Barak, who was the president of the Supreme Court, he helped devise the concept of reasonableness or extreme unreasonableness. And they would strike down the actions of administrators, uh, the legislature, the military, if they felt they were extremely unreasonable. Now, extremely unreasonable is a vague, open-ended criteria. Reasonable people could disagree as to whether it should be used or not, but it's not something to have street demonstrations over. It's not something for the military to say, we won't serve, for doctors to say, we won't serve. It's an internal dispute in Israel that should be resolved democratically. Now, sure, protests are good. Our First Amendment provides for the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances, which means peaceful protest. Now, the good thing is that the protests in Israel have been peaceful compared to those in France and compared to those done by Black Lives Matter in the United States. They've been peaceful, but they've been very angry. And I don't think that the uh, protesters are justified in doing some of the things they're doing. Here's what I think BB is thinking. He's very smart. He's very clever. He wanted to get through this first provision about reasonableness, and he did. He voted. It was voted. It's voted 64 to uh, 50 something or other. Now I think he's going to take a pause. The Knesset is out of session until the fall, and I think he's going to try very hard to come to an accommodation. I'm part of that process. Um, I've been working closely with the President of Israel. He's also an old friend, Isaac Herzog, Bougie, we call him. I've been working with Bibi, I've been working with um, uh, others to try to achieve some kind of a peaceful compromise resolution, which is what is absolutely essential here. And I have a hunch we're going to get it. Are there, am I right in the reading of uh, different opinions that there is large money that doesn't necessarily that that is uh not necessarily in it for the peace and love and understanding uh of one another and bringing people together that there is a force in here that is trying to break israel uh apart and break benjamin netanyahu well, i wouldn't be surprised i don't know any facts that support that i wouldn't be surprised certainly iran has already said israel has been weakened hamas has already said israel has been weakened you know, today is a very important Jewish holiday. It's called Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av. It was the day that the Second Temple in Jerusalem was destroyed uh, by the Romans in 70 or so AD. Um, and of course, you know, Jesus went to that temple. That's where the uh, he threw over the, the desks of the money lenders. Uh, that temple was a very important both to Christianity and to, and to Judaism, and it was destroyed. And today is the day we celebrate. If I'm a little breathless, is because I'm fasting. Um, as a Jew, I fast on this holiday. It's a fasting holiday. And it's a holiday that commemorates the fact that the temple was destroyed because Jews were attacking each other, because Jews couldn't agree. And this is a day that I think Israelis should commemorate by getting together and agreeing and having compromises. That's what I've been interested in. And I hope I can help bring that about. And I know that Netanyahu wants to bring that about. And I know that there are people, some on the left, who want to bring that about. The problem is the extremists on both sides, as often is the case, are benefiting from the animosity. Um, their bases are strengthened when there is controversy. The same way that is true in the United States and in, in both countries. We're so much better off yeah. moving somewhat to the middle. I have more in common with centrist conservatives than I do with uh, radicals on the left. I'm a liberal, a true liberal and a true conservative have a great deal in common. Small government, limitations yes. on power, due process, yeah. free speech, 
And that's the, the points we ought to emphasize. Yeah. Alan, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. The name of the book is, thank you, Get Trump. You can get that now. The effort to destroy Trump, just get him. Get Trump and the host of The Dirt Show. Uh, a guy who I don't always agree with, uh, but uh, a guy I think I have more in common with as well, with some members uh, of the Republican Party, even. Alan Dershowitz, back in a minute. The Glenn Beck Program. What is the first thing you look for when you're buying meat? The price? The sell-by date? How about whether or not it's sourced in America? Ranches and farms are going out of business every day in this country. I drive up the road here and you see all of the all of the dairy farms that are gone now. It's quite amazing. We must keep our local farms and ranchers in business. 85% of grass-fed beef is imported from overseas, even with a little flag sticker on it. They source at Good Ranchers all of their high quality and chicken from local farms, local ranches. And for every box ordered, Good Ranchers donates 10 meals to Americans in need. If you want to lock in your price, what you're paying for in meat in two years, no matter what the economy does, go to Good Ranchers. Get your subscription now. It is your inflation-proof ticket to amazing meats. Right now, head on over to GoodRanchers.com. Use the promo code BECK. Save $30. It's GoodRanchers.com. Promo code BECK. 30 bucks off with the promo code BECK. GoodRanchers.com. And don't forget to use your promo code GLEN for $10 off your subscription at BlazeTV.com. I'm Rob Woodard, News Radio 920 and 1047 FM. Here's what's happening. Providence Police investigating a homicide. A 30-year-old man fatally stabbed in the area of Sterling Avenue in the Silver Lake neighborhood about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. EPA is punishing a Rhode Island business for a hazardous material leak. Taylor Farms, New England, and North Kingstown had an accidental ammonia leak in 2020. A training camp to get ready for the 2023-24 NFL season underway in Foxborough. Wednesday was the first day, first preseason game at Gillette against the Texans, August 10th. Get news 24-7 on demand at NewsRadioRI.com. Now, here's your Storm Team 10 forecast. Today's a weather alert day for the high heat. Inland temperatures reach near 90. It'll be feeling like the 90s to near 100 degrees. If you're headed to the coastline, we have high surf advisories. Gusty winds with a few thunderstorms pop up this afternoon. Some could be strong with gusty winds and heavy downpours. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, hot and humid again, feeling like the low 100s with air temperatures in the low 90s. I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Christina Ernie on News Radio 920 and 1. 1047 FM. News Radio 920 and 1047 FM. Traffic. You're riding your brakes on 95 North from 195 to a center lane breakdown at the state offices. Slow southbound on 95 from Charles Street to Atwell's Ave. You're busy on 195 West Broadway to the Washington Bridge. I'm Jackie Murphy on News Radio 920 and 1047 FM. This report is sponsored by Blankster.com. Hi, I'm Kyle at Blindster.com, and I sell custom blinds designed for do-it-yourselfers. Unlike stock blinds offered at big box retailers, Blindster blinds are custom made for your windows and shipping is free. Don't hire an expensive pro, do it yourself and say big at Blindster.com. Ever since he tried the Rough Greens for the first time, my dog, Uno, has changed. He's a completely different dog. I hear from people all the time in the audience. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of letters have come in who have had the same experience with their dog. They've heard me talk about Rough Greens on the show. They get some for themselves. And as soon as they sprinkle it on the dog's food, the dog literally wolfs it down. And it's really good for him. It's not a dog food. It's just chock full of vitamins and minerals and probiotics and omega oils that you sprinkle. Your dog needs these things to be healthy. My dog was easy. From the first time he tried Rough Greens, Uno was in love. Some dogs take a little bit to get used to the new flavor, though. Dr. Dennis Black, the inventor of Rough Greens, was on the phone with me last week. He doesn't want that to be a reason for you not to come. He's got a special gift available. You can get a free bag of Rough Greens for your dog just to try out. All you pay is shipping. Go to roughgreens.com slash back or call 833-GLEN-33. Put it on your dog's food and begin to watch your dog become healthier. 
Your money is now controlled by the U.S. government.